Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to look at a paper that's a classic. It was published back in 1983, 40 years ago, and is still being actively cited because of how insightful it was at the time and continues to be today. The author is Lisanne Bainbridge, who is a cognitive psychologist, and the title, The Ironies of Automation, should already pique your interest. While this was written in the context of automation of industrial processes, things like factories and assembly lines, the general concepts discussed in this paper apply very much to automation of all kinds, even things like automation of knowledge work. And as we go through some of the points in this paper, you'll see how all or most of these points are still very, very relevant today. The very first fundamental question is, once you have automated some process, what kind of task is then left for the human operator to do? And there are two things that operator can do. He can either monitor that this automation is happening correctly, or if that automation fails, he has to either take over that failed process and steer it himself or call upon someone more experienced. But the fundamental problem here is that if the automation runs without failure most of the time, that means the operator is in monitoring mode most of the time. And these skills will deteriorate when they are not used. That means that this operator who was once experienced but is now mostly just monitoring automation his skills are slowly degrading. And then if something happens where the automation breaks down or does something unexpected, he'll be forced to take over, at which time he may not be as good at understanding what's happening or fixing the problem. The fundamental process here is just one of practice and familiarity. If you look at the long-term memory that comes from operating or understanding a complex system, that long-term memory degrades over time if it is not used frequently. And that's what's happening when the operator is reduced to simply someone who mines the machine. The second reason is that this kind of skill is developed in the first place by using these complex systems frequently and seeing how they behave, getting feedback from their behavior. And that is also sharply reduced when you're simply monitoring the automation. And there's also a more fundamental human cognitive limit, which is that many studies have shown that it is next to impossible for a human to actively, attentively monitor a system where very little is happening. And that is the first big irony of automation. Supposedly, the automatic system exists because it can do the job better than humans. At the same time, the human operator is put in a position of monitoring it to make sure it is doing what it's supposed to be doing and then to take over when problems arise. So given this fundamental irony, what kind of solutions can we put into place? That's what the second half of this paper looks at. The very first proposed solution is one that's going to be familiar to most developers or DevOps folks, and that is automated alarms. So placing bounds on the normal operation of a system and then setting off some kind of an alarm when it goes out of those bounds. Of course, if you've ever been on call for a system, you'll know that it's not as simple as simply having alarms. There are many, many considerations that go into actually designing good alerts or alarms. But one that the author points out over here is that alarms can sometimes camouflage system failure because by the time it goes off, some parameter of the system has already been veering off course for a while. So the alarm isn't always on a trend, it's simply on a threshold of some value being crossed. Another thing to keep in mind when designing alarms is that you want the human operator who's reacting to the alarm to have some sort of a useful mental model of what the system is doing. If you're asking the human operator to take over, they should know how to effectively do that and what levers they can pull and what state the system is in. And that brings us to the second 
proposed solution, which is to maintain long-term knowledge and skills. And the way to do that is to fall back to manual mode once in a while, to turn off the automation and have the operator actually control the system manually every now and then. And if you can't do that, then maybe fall back on a simulator. This was really prescient because as late as sometime in the 2010s, the FAA issued guidance for commercial airline pilots to actually fly their planes without autopilot once in a while in order to maintain their flying skills. This was published in response to a number of accidents and near accidents that happened because pilots had become so dependent on autopilot that they could not effectively deal with situations when autopilot was disengaged. And this brings us to what might be the central point of this entire paper, which is that with automation that takes away the easy parts of an operator's task, it makes the difficult parts of the operator's task more difficult. And what the author is proposing here is that the approach of automation should be more geared towards cooperating with the human. Instead of automation trying to take over an entire process, perhaps it could be geared towards helping the human operator to try and reduce the possible errors that they could make or giving them assistance in making decisions. What the author is proposing here is that automation should try to relieve the human workload by simplifying their decisions as opposed to taking it over completely. Automation should also be transparent to the human operator. The humans must understand what tasks the automation is doing and how exactly it is doing them because otherwise they will not be effective when the automation breaks down and they have to take over. Interestingly, in some studies of automation, they found that when workloads were light, the operators were willing to let the computer do most of the work. However, when the workload was heavy, it was much more common for them to step in and override the computer. So that was a quick look at a classic 40-year-old paper that looks at the considerations we have to think about when trying to bring automation to any kind of a process that humans are involved in and points out certain ironies in it, proposes certain solutions. I hope you enjoyed that. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing to this channel, like the video, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.